do you know? Nikon finally announced the D850. Let's talk about it. So the price point is about $3,300, which sounds just about right. It was rumored it'd be around the $4,000 mark, give or take a little bit, which personally I think would have been a little bit too high. Given the specs and everything that's actually in the D850, the camera itself, I think $3,300 is actually a pretty good value. The information on the D850 has slowly leaked out over the last few weeks and months, which kind of makes you wonder why it took so long for Nikon to formally roll it out to the public. Well, I'm sure there are many reasons, but I think one reason could have been the price. They just weren't sure on the price. They would throw out some ideas, kind of get a feedback and a vibe on what everybody else was thinking, and then they slowly decided on 3300, which I think was probably the right call. All right, so let's get right into it. The A50 comes with a 45.7 megapixel CMOS sensor. It's about a 25% or so increase over the A10. I was hoping for maybe a little bit more of an upgrade, but that's still a very, very solid sensor. The ISO range is a 64 on the low end, 25,600 on the high end. It can go down and up a little bit, down to 32, and it can go up a little bit higher as well. Personally, I don't worry about the high ISOs, just because I never use those. Uh, the, to me, there's no sense in taking uh, a 25,600 ISO photo, because it's going to be super grainy and pretty much unusable. If you're in a situation like that, then I guess you have to deal with it, but I'm never there, and I do everything I can to avoid the high ISO, so I try not to worry about that. I love that it goes down to 64. That way, you can take away all the grain, you can do some nice slow pans, and it works out really, really well. It has no low-pass filter for better resolution. It was expected, and it was a good call. It has the same XP5 processor, the same as the flagship D5. Perfect. It's supposed to be capable of autofocusing down to negative 4 EV. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Straight out of the box, it shoots about 7 frames per second up to about 51 raw images. Do the math, that's about 7 seconds uh, at 7 images per second. It's very solid. If you shove a battery grip onto the bottom of that, you get another 2 frames per second up to 9 frames per second. That's very, very good. To get those few extra frames, you do have to strap the MB D18 battery grip onto the bottom of that. It runs about $400. That's Nikon's battery grip. It's a little bit expensive, but I'm sure very, very soon third-party grips will be coming out at a much cheaper price. It was rumored a few weeks ago that the 850 would actually be shooting about 10 frames per second, which when that came out I thought kind of sounded a little bit odd, just because it was getting a little bit too close to their flagship D5. At that point, you would have to really think about would you spend the several extra thousand dollars on the D5, or for just a few less frames per second, go down to the 850. So they protected themselves, dropped a few frames down to 7, and then 9 on the high end with the battery grip, and that makes a lot more sense. It has the same 153 autofocus system as the D5 and the D500. It was expected, but it was well received. Everybody seemed to love that system. Battery life on the 850 is supposed to be a huge step up over its predecessor in the D810, which shot about 1200 frames per battery, which honestly wasn't very bad at all. But the 850 is supposed to come in the range of a little over 1800, 1840 to be exact, which is a huge, huge improvement over a battery that's honestly pretty good. That's very impressive. The D850 has a few silent modes as well, which are always welcome in wedding photography or sports photography, especially if you're shooting something like golf or in a press conference, a sports press conference or a news press conference, when you don't want to have clicking and the video people don't want to have clicking all over the place. So silent modes are always good. Mode 1 has the full 45.7 megapixels, shooting at about 6 frames per second, which is pretty good. Mode 2 drops down to just 9 megapixels, but it shoots about 30 frames per second. Personally, I'm excited about mode one. That works really well. Six frames per second is still plenty good, especially in situations like that. I would never, I don't think, drop down to nine megapixels, even at 30 frames per second, just because I'd rather have the quality of the 45 megapixels over the quantity of 30 crappy nine megapixel photos. Personally, that's just me. Maybe you'll find a use for the 30 frames at uh, nine megapixels, but that one's just not for me. It shoots 4K video in both cropped and uncropped full frame FX format, which I know has made a lot of people out there happy. They're still touting the 8K time lapse video, shooting up to 9,999 frames, which I guess is great. Personally, I don't see myself ever using it. Maybe I will once I actually you know, get it in my hands and I can discover and play with it a little bit, but I never see myself using it. Maybe you guys will. It also has something called focus shift mode for focus stacking. Basically what that is, you just set up your camera and your lens, and then you have it set up for a predetermined area to where the camera all by itself, without you really doing anything uh, to it, will take a photo and then move the focus point, and then move it again, then again, and again, and have tons of photos all together, up to, I believe, 300. It'll then save all those images into a file on your card, which then you can save and bring onto your computer, and you can put them all together using a third-party uh, focus stacking software and create one awesome image. It's really nothing I have much experience with, but it intrigues me. 
The camera has dual card slots, one XQD and one SD. That was pretty much expected. They took away the internal pop-up flash on top of the camera. That might bother some of you, it might not. Uh, if you're working with an 850, you probably have an external flash to put on top anyway. That's what I normally do. I never use the internal flash, so it doesn't really matter. Now that we've talked about the internal guts of the camera, let's talk a little bit about the outside. It is a little bit larger than the 810, and it weighs just, a, I think, believe, just like an ounce more. The size and weight of cameras really doesn't bother me very much. As long as it has a nice grippy grip to it, that's all that really matters. It's obviously a professional body, so it's no surprise that it's weather sealed and it's built super tough. It has a 3.2 inch, 2.36 million dot uh, touch bowl tilt screen, which Bravo on that and bringing that to the 850. I never really liked tilt screens that much. Uh, they were just kind of too flimsy for me. And finally I started getting into it when I bought my D750. I absolutely love it. Uh, it's great for video work, but I use it for photo work as lo a lot as well, especially when you're holding it up high over your, over your head, which I don't like doing a lot, but it is handy sometimes, and then bringing it nice and low. It's really nice to use and it's pretty much standard on cameras nowadays. Uh, most cameras have them. If not, I would say in the next year or two, pretty much every camera that comes out will have a tiltable and touchscreen. As I just mentioned, it is a touchable screen, which allows you to, in live view, be able to uh, touch focus, and then obviously scroll through menus and that kind of thing, which is a cool upgrade. The back of the camera has illuminated buttons, which is nice, I guess. It's gotten rave reviews by people out there, so people obviously love it. Personally, to me, it doesn't really matter too much, just because you, when after, after you're using it for a few weeks, and definitely after a few months, you know where the buttons are, and you kind of use them um, without looking anyway. I don't think I honestly ever really look at the logos on my buttons. I just kind of know, and it's muscle memory type of thing. As I mentioned before, the price point is about $3,300 and it's due to ship next month in September. So what are your thoughts on the camera? Would you have paid more for it? Would you not think it's quite worth the $3,300 and would you have paid a little bit less? What about the specs? What's in it that you're happy is in it? And what do you wish that was in it that's not in it? As always, be sure to subscribe and thanks for watching.